when you uh, uh, refer to being on the canal, uh, the, the phase of the war then changed and uh, you started what we refer to as a desert campaign, conducting uh, an advance through the eastern Palestine up through to, to Damascus. Could you tell us something about that? <coughs> well, for the first uh, few months, it was patrols going out making contact with the Turkish patrols and all through that country there are uh, oasis with date palms in them. You know, on some, some of these oasis were small, some of them were up to a thousand trees. And uh, on one particular oasis, which was about halfway between the advancing Turks and our lines, our main lines, <coughs> there was an oasis, say seven or eight hundred trees. And this was used by the, we discovered, this was used by the Turks for watering their camels, or a section of their camel corps were using it for watering. So they, they used uh, horses that they captured, but not from the Australians, and they <laughs> used the camel corps as much as possible. But the, there are two types of camel that are used. There's a camel that is the baggage camel, who travels about two miles an hour, and carries big weights, and there's the Bisharin camel, which is bred, and there's as much difference between the two types of camel as there is between a racehorse and a Clydesdale. The, uh, the Bisharin camel is worth an awful lot of money. It's well bred. Their, uh, their pedigrees go back, and they keep their pedigrees the same as we do with, with stud stock. The, the Bisharin camel doesn't walk. He travels at about eight miles an hour and what we would call an amble. Well, our Air Force, of course, we had a squadron there, Australian squadron. They uh, came over and reported that the Turks were watering their camels at this particular oasis. And uh, my regiment, which was the nearest, told to send a, a uh, squadron out and see what we could do about it. Well, they had to uh, travel at night. So we used to move out at night and then camp in the daytime in the nurses and then move on the next night. Well, anyhow, it was about a two days journey. Well, when we got to this oasis and surrounded it, just as dawn was breaking, and found it was occupied by a Turkish force, a small Turkish force, with a, a camel corps and uh, these Bisharine camels. Well, after a bit of a scrap, we counted up the camels that were damaged, and I think there were 120, but one camel uh, was wounded and my groom, who was a very good man with horses, he said to me, look Skipper, he said, I think we can save this one. And I said, all right, well, I'll hand him over to you, see if you can get him back. Anyhow, we, we got back to the line, went back to our regimental headquarters and handed over these 120 that were uninjured. We got a pat on the back for that because they were worth a heck of a lot of money, these Bisharine camels. And the one that was put on our lines, the groom looked after it and he uh, it cured it. The bullet went right through its neck, but it hadn't cut anything vital. And I used to ride it round on our outposts around Duadar. It took us two hours to go round on horseback. And I'd go round on half an hour well, on my camel. And this went on for well, a month or six weeks until somebody at brigade headquarters put me in. And of course, that was the <laughs> that was the end of my Bisharine camel. One day, well, the CO got a chip from Brigade wanting to know what they were doing with a Bisharine camel, and Haddon McNeil handled all those camels that he got. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they handed them over to our camel yeah, corps, which at that time was we being had, formed. Yeah, we had a camel corps. Oh yes, and they were. Uh, and they, they were part of the attack on Damascus, were they? Yes, not? they were. They were recruited from the uh, reinforcements from the Light Horse and a number of old officers or older officers from the Light Horse went over to the Camel Corps. Sent down to a details camp in Tel El Kabir and um, that was right out in the desert. Uh, blazing hot in the day and freezing cold at night. It is a miserable sort of place and I was glad uh, after a few weeks there to, uh, to join the, the Camel Corps. We got the opportunity of joining the Camel Corps. Just before leaving there, I met an old friend in the canteen, and uh, his name is Nugget Balfour, and I said to him, what are you doing, Nugget? He said, oh, I, I just come over from Australia with the number one squad in Australian Flying Corps. Well, I was very interested in that, and um, I said, well, how do you get into that? And he told me, 
the, the deprecations would be called for orders, and sure enough, they were. And I joined, I joined, uh, rather put in my application immediately. And the, uh, the, the Commandant of the Camel Corps, he sent for me and he said, uh, uh, what do you know about uh, engines? And uh, I uh, explained a lot to him. He said, well, my car's giving me trouble. Go out with my uh, officer here and uh, tell me what, uh, what the trouble is. Well, I think I convinced him I knew as much about engines as I did about camels. And uh, so I was sent down to the Suez Canal at Kantara uh, to um, join Number One Squadron. And after a brief trade test, they took me on as uh, Air Mechanic Class Two. At that period that I first met uh, Captain Williams, later to become Air Marshal Sir Richard Williams, uh, I was assisting in putting an engine in, uh, in a B-2E aeroplane and sand flies were getting in my eyes and nose and I swore at them. And he uh, told me off properly that I, that I, I shouldn't use language like that. <laughs> and uh, that was almost the end of my career in the Air Force. However, I survived that. Well, matter of fact, I was not in a regiment, but I was with the regiments at different times. I was a member of the Camel Corps for a start. They've got that on my medals. And I was sent out picking up wounded with, on camels. There was a, an Imperial Camel uh, Battalion then. They were done not long after I joined. Uh, we were initiated straight into the line with the camels. Oh, I'd never ridden a camel before. Oh, we had to put up with that. We were put on the camel and taken out. And I was with the 5th Camel Brigade Field Ambulance. Have you ever heard of Kakalai? There's not many people have heard of that, Kakalai. C-A-C-O-L-E-T. Well, that was simply a cradle or a stretcher. Uh, one each side of the hump, and the camel had to be barracked, as we call it, on the floor, sitting down. And you put the patient in it, or the wounded man, or the sick man, and then the camel would get up. But um, they were just agony for a wounded man, so they were done away with it in the finish. And you'd get them in there, but a badly wounded man, they, you know, when a camel walks, they're pretty rough. You get pushed and pushed and pushed. I didn't like him and I got out of it. In the final big push in Palestine there, Alan B. lined all, his, all the guns he could get. He couldn't put them all in, actually, right on the front, across the front, wherever he could. And he just blew everything to pieces that he could reach. And on the coast where it's flat country, they, they just rolled the line back, right like the amount of troops went through and up the coast. and. There was nothing to it, only to cut them off and get them to surrender. And the other mob out on the Jordan, they must have went up their salt way, over to a man, captured a man, cleaned that up. Of course, Lawrence Roby was pretty well through there too. And then they went over and took them to Damascus. That's where about ten or a dozen sergeants out of my regiment were captured there. And the Germans let them loose next morning. Held them overnight and let them loose next morning. They'd been mucking around, I suppose, in a damn town or somewhere. They said, your own troops will be at 10 o'clock. But, uh, oh, what a mismanagement. Yeah. Too many blunders. The yeah. Hamilton should never have gone in the way he did there. What a Gaza. He took 11, Tank. they gave him 11 tanks in the second attack. <laughs> he had 12 tanks, but one was no good or something. A nice undulating country like this. And uh, he, took, he sent his 11 tanks in and, uh, the Camel Corps followed them up, and they reckon all the shells that Mr. Kang hit the Camel Corps. Only 17 of them left out of 150 or something, and, oh, and the tanks just came up onto the last ridge, what was left of them, and they just knocked them off like that.